Let's bring in two experts now on this type of investigation. Joining me now, Frank Figlusi, MSNBC national security analyst and the former assistant director for counterintelligence at the FBI, and Seth Waxman, a former federal prosecutor and current partner at the firm of Dickinson Wright, specializing in uh, government investigations and securities enforcement. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Seth, I'll start with you. First of all, these uh, charges against these 13 Russian nationals who will likely never face a judge in a U.S. courtroom, what's the, the real value of these indictments? Well, I think it could have two values. The first value is, of course, putting these people on notice that they've engaged in criminal conduct. And while it may be difficult to bring those Russians to justice here in the U.S., I will tell you, having worked in the Office of International Affairs, their mantra is, we never forget. And the idea that there will be red notices out there in the international community if those individuals were to travel to uh, foreign countries that we have extradition treaties with, they very well may be brought to justice. There's also another strategic element to Bob Mueller's indictment. The timing of it, uh, to me, is significant. It may be a prelude to uh, a counter if, if President Trump were to, in fact, plead the fifth. I mean, we know that there's this impending meeting between the Mueller team and Trump and his lawyers where Bob Mueller is going to get to question uh, Donald Trump extensively. And I will tell you, as a criminal defense lawyer, under any normal circumstances, I would never allow my client into those into that room to be questioned by Bob Mueller. Of course, the president is not a, uh, a normal client or, or typical client. You know, if he were to plead the fifth, the political ramifications could be far-reaching. Uh, and, and so I think that the, the lawyers there and, and President Trump still, though, with that risk, may be considering pleading the fifth. Um, and to claim that they aren't pleading the fifth because he did anything wrong, but rather because the investigation is a sham or a hoax, and that this indictment puts into the public arena that, this, uh, that the investigation is the exact opposite, that it's not a hoax, that it's not a sham, and that Bob Mueller put this indictment out there, uh, given the timing, to set the stage to counter any claim by President Trump of a Fifth Amendment right uh, not to testify. Frank, I want to get your read on this, too. What does this indictment suggest about Mueller's overall strategy? Strategy here. Yeah, we, what we saw here on Friday was a, was a smart tactic as part of an overall strategy, and, and here's why. Mueller could have come out Friday, let's say with the obstruction charges against the campaign advisors, perhaps against Trump. We've all been talking for weeks and months about how strong an obstruction case there might be right now. But if he did that, many members of Congress, many Americans would have said, well, He's obstructing what? He's obstructing something uh, that's a Russian hoax that hasn't been proven. What we saw on Friday was Mueller laying the groundwork, saying, this is serious business. The Russian case is for real. So when I come in later and try to prove obstruction, you need to care about it because this is what was being obstructed. And Seth, we, we noted that the president has been tweeting. He's tweeted about this over and over again this morning. Uh, a deputy White House press secretary said uh, this. Uh, take a listen to this. First of all, we have to understand this began in 2014 under then President Barack Obama's nose. He didn't do a thing about it. Long before Donald Trump announced for president, uh, this was going on. Also, it points out clearly that uh, in this process there was no collusion, as you just pointed out. The president said it multiple times. This makes it clear and concise for the American people and proves the president correct. No collusion between Donald Trump, his campaign, and Russia. And also, I think this is important, too. It did not affect the outcome of the election whatsoever. So, Seth, it seems the main point here is that the indictment proves President Trump's innocence and that the, the multi-million dollar Russian campaign didn't result in any influence on the election. Uh, is, is that the, the, sort of the right-minded way to look at this? Well, I think those are self-serving statements. I mean, if you look at this indictment and you see the discussion in 2014 and, and the year that followed, it's pretty a small part of that indictment. But when you get to the heart of that indictment and you read 20 or 30 pages, it all focuses on the summer of 2016. And so while we have this, you know, far-ranging conspiracy in the summer of 2016 that's laid out in that indictment, we also know from everything else about this investigation, at the same time, President, uh, uh, you know, Don Trump Jr., Paul Manafort, um, Jared Kushner were meeting at the Trump Tower with a Russian contingent of operatives during that same month. So the, the confluence or the overlap of two, those two events and the things that followed going in towards the election, I think can't be dismissed or, or you know, talked away with what I appear to, what I think are self-serving statements. And, and so, Frank, your final thoughts on this as we wait to see what, if anything, happens next. 
Yeah, so Aaron, you might want to tell your production staff to start saving and setting aside all these clips of, of Trump uh, surrogates and, and members of Congress who are saying no collusion, this, this indictment proves no collusion. Because someday, perhaps soon, if Mueller does charge obstruction, uh, you're going to want to play all of those because I don't know how they're going to they're going to reverse their statements and they're not going to be able to do it. The, here's my last word. This 32 page indictment contains such level of detail that we know that, that the data is coming from the entire intelligence community. We believe there are signal intercepts in there of conversations that are referred to. What don't we know about who else has been intercepted? What other Russian government operatives have been intercepted by our intelligence community? And who were they speaking to at the time? Keep your eye out for that. All right. Production team has taken note of that, Frank. The uh, NBC archives will be very deep and, and <laughs> wide open for this one. Frank Figlusi and Seth Waxman. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.